The question of whether man would live at all must refer undoubtedly to the future state. Do I have a future after I succumb in this life? Immortality deals with the fact of incorruption, incapacity to decay. I would know nothing about that if it was not for what's revealed in the Word of God. In this state, the Gospel comes and reveals truths worthy of all acceptation. Only the gospel sheds light where man had desired it. Man wanted to know this colossal question, but nothing could answer it but the gospel. Hallelujah. Who is going to reveal to us this important truth? Why did we gather today? Why are we here? What is God presenting to us? My neglect of not sitting at the table of study, talking about a human being, is a terrible neglect because my soul really wants to know what is my purpose and what is my destination for all of the education I may attain to in this life, but when I go to the grave, it goes with me. The only thing that will matter is what God says in his word concerning my soul. Oh, hallelujah. My soul is precious. It's so precious that if God did not reveal himself, I would not know who is the way, the truth, and the life. But because of his love, he's opened up my understanding to a flood of knowledge that I could not attain in the schools of higher learning. Yes, get your education, but don't cancel out the gospel. He saved us. But notice what he says in verse. But it's now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he's appeared. If he had no appear, we would not have the revelation. It was because of his manifestation, which he so lovingly brought to our attention at the appointed time. Who is this Jesus? Name that was not known to the Old Testament prophets. They called him certain things. Isaiah said his name shall be called Wonderful. Oh, what is that name? All I know is Wonderful. Name should be called Counselor. I don't know what it is, but I know he's a comforter. He's a counselor. I don't know his name, though. His name would be called Mighty God. I don't know who this Mighty God is, but I know whoever he is, whatever his name is, he will reveal the Mighty God to us. Who is this everlasting Father? I don't know his name yet, but I want you to know whoever he is, he's the everlasting Father. Who is this Prince of Peace? I don't know what his name is, but I know when I find out what his name is, he will be the Prince of Peace. And I give his name the glory. 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 All I know that I found out one day he's going to be born. I don't know how he's going to do it, but one day he's going to be born. So Genesis says to you and I, concerning Elohim, who's also Adonai, who is the Messiah, who is our Savior. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Whoever he is, he created the heavens and the earth. I know he's God. I know he's a spirit. I know that he is a word. He's able to speak because when John talks about him, he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Uh, and the word was God. The word is God. He was in the beginning with God. All things, not some things, all things were made through him and without him. Nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This man, whoever he is, he's the light. Then John says, and the Word be 
became flesh. The Word God became flesh. What a manifestation of a revelation that man did not have. And we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What a mighty God we serve. Show us the Father. Philip, ask the question. Just show me who the Father is and that'll satisfy me. Philip, have I been so long with you and you ask me to show you the Father when you see me, when you look at me, when you gaze at me, you see the Father. I am the Creator. Don't be ashamed of my testimony. My testimony is for your salvation. John goes on to write, and this is life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I belong. You belong to the Father. That's why we cried out, Abba, Father. We had to be born from on high. Oh, glory to God. Else we couldn't have entered the kingdom of the everlasting Father. But due to the fact we have His power. Oh, what a manifestation that brings out a superb revelation. That's what Colossians tells us. I'll tell you what to give thanks for. He says this in verse number 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Ah, oh, look at Paul now in Revelation knowledge. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He's the invisible God manifested and he came that I and you 